What's up, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and in today's video, I'm going to take you through optimizing Azure World for maximum performance regardless of your PC setup. So let's just get right into it. To begin, the first thing that you should obviously do is press start, type in Windows Update and check to see if there are Windows updates available. And on top of that, check to see if your graphics card is up to date as well through NVIDIA or AMD software or websites. Then if you haven't already, we'll be disabling game mode, game bar and captures. These are all included in Windows and if you actually use these features, you can leave them on, but turning them off leads to a lot more performance regardless of what game you're playing. It's a standard to turn these off. Press start and type in game mode. Then we'll head into game mode settings. From here, Simply make sure to turn off game mode by clicking this toggle. Then we'll head across to Xbox Game Bar and we'll be turning this off as well. Then into the Capture section, we'll go ahead and turn all of these options off. So background recording off, recorded audio off, and then that's about it. Then for this next step, we'll go ahead and start up the game. Once the game's open, simply head across to the in-game options menu, Settings. Then we'll be messing with some of these options. Number one, window mode should always be full screen for games as you'll get the best input latency and FPS possible on your computer. Having that set to windowed mode or windowed borderless will dramatically affect both of those. From here, simply click apply and then keep when prompted. That simply makes sure that the rest of these settings will apply smoothly with less chance of crashing as adjusting to full screen mode can sometimes cause crashing in games. Then we'll change the resolution to the resolution of your monitor. If you drop this to lower than the resolution of your monitor, then you should gain some FPS quite dramatically. The lower you go, the more FPS you get. The next one, frame rate limit, should be set to unlimited. But if you're recording with something like OBS and you find that your recording software is dropping frames or the actual video is coming out really stuttery, try and limit this to your monitor's refresh rate, which for me is 144, or at least 60 to try and get a solid FPS cap. If you have the set too high, the game will try and use all of your GPU and leave none behind for your recording software. Then vertical sync or vSync should always be off to help lessen input lag. 3D resolution should also always be set to 100. Lowering this will make your game incredibly blurry and give you about the same performance boost as dropping to this resolution manually inside of the resolution option over here. By lowering your 3D resolution and not your actual screen resolution, you'll just make the game blurry. Dropping your resolution here will keep the game's sharpness but make things run smoother, obviously at a lower resolution. At worst, set this option to about 90% or 95%. Then, motion blur is often considered a really annoying add-on that games have on by default. It does, of course, cost some performance to blur things while you're looking around. This is, of course, also personal preference, so I always set mine to zero for the best performance and the best looks. Having too much motion blur makes me feel a little bit queasy. Gamma we can leave, and field view is obviously personal preference. Scrolling down to the quality section, we get into some juicy options. Number one, set graphics quality all the way to custom by hitting right a whole bunch of times. Then when we see this, we'll continue to screen effects. These are lights, flares, blood, and more. Lowering this option will help your game a lot. View distance can help FPS as well, but having it at anything lower than medium can hinder your experience. Shadows being set to low will give you a lot more FPS with minimal noticeability, as you're not often going to be focusing on shadows, they're just there in the background. It's supposed to be blurred anyways. The texture setting is completely dependent on how much VRAM your graphics card has. A graphics card with anything more than 4GB can usually play at ultra or very high. Lowering this option will help your FPS minimally unless you have a really underpowered graphics card with less than 4GB of RAM. So I'll leave it at either ultra or very high. Then visual effects are explosions, bullets, lasers, and more. Dropping this will help stabilize your FPS during fights. Other than that, not too much. I'll leave it at same medium. Then foliage is simply just foliage. That's the entire description it gives. Very helpful. It's trees, grass, etc, etc. Lowering this will help FPS in areas that have tons of foliage, trees, grass, etc. Then at the very bottom, we have an option for show chromatic aberration. This can cause some performance impact, though it's barely noticeable. This is of course mainly up to user preference. Turning this off will lead to a slightly less blurry game, but of course only some people will notice the difference, and those who do will either like it or dislike it. Enable this or disable this as you see fit. Then simply click apply to apply all of the changes that we set, and then keep. Now your game should be running a lot better. If you'd like to squeeze some extra performance out while we're here, you can drop the resolution even further. 
But before doing that, we're going to continue into a couple more sections to squeeze the absolute most out of this game. So I'll hit escape, click, and then click quit. Now we're back in our desktop. From here, I'll be opening up the NVIDIA control panel and messing with some settings. If you're using an AMD graphics card, note that you may have some of these settings, you may not, and of course you'll be using a different piece of software. So I'll right click on my desktop and click NVIDIA control panel. Then when it opens up, simply make sure that you're on the adjust image settings with preview section. Simply make sure that use the advanced 3D image settings is checked and hit apply. After doing that, head across to manage 3D settings on the left hand side. Head across to the program settings tab and locate the game if you've messed with the settings before. If you haven't and you don't see it appear on this list, then head across to the global settings tab as whatever we change here will affect absolutely every game on your PC unless it has different options defined in this program settings page over here. So changing these will help a lot more than just the game. That's why we're doing it here under global settings. You may have more or fewer settings than me depending on your hardware. Change what you see available. I'll just read through these to save on time. Off, 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 on. This has minimal performance impact, but can help visibility. Off, these next two should be grayed out being anti-aliasing setting and transparency, select all. Off, then low latency mode is a new feature from Nvidia. I like having this to ultra or simply on. Having this off can help extend battery life, but having it on should help a lower input latency in games that support it. Unfortunately, this isn't one of them. Simply set this to off to not cap our FPS. Monitor technology you'll only see if you have a G-Sync or a V-Sync display. I'll have G-Sync selected. Off, auto select, prefer maximum performance, highest available. On, on, allow, high performance, on, on, off, off one. After changing any one of those, simply click apply and then close out of the NVIDIA control panel as we're done there. Next up, we'll be checking the power plan on our PC. Obviously, if you're using a laptop, make sure to change this back to power saving or whatever it is when you're not playing the game to help save battery life when you're taking it places. Press start and then type in power or power space options. Then open up power and sleep settings. When you see this window, click additional power settings and a new window will open up. Then you should see a bunch of options, but if you're like me, you've disabled all of them and you only have the ultimate performance option here. You should see a list of plans with dots next to it. Simply clicking those dots, the one that's filled in should be the active power plan. You should select ultimate performance or high performance. This ultimate performance option over here is built into Windows, but hidden by default. If you don't see this ultimate performance option, check the description down below for a code that we'll be copying and pasting. Hit start, type in CMD, then right click on command prompt, run as admin. Inside of here, we'll be pasting in this command that we copied from the description down below. Hit enter, and then your ultimate performance plan should be added to this list over here. Now you should simply select it, and you should get the best performance possible for your computer that the power settings can give you. This can, of course, raise the power that your PC consumes, so if you're on a laptop, having this option selected all the time may not be the best of ideas. You may want to set it back to power saving or balance depending on what you do with your PC. Changing it to and from this mode should help a performance and changing it away should save battery life. Then you can close out of all of those windows. The next part of this tutorial will be the config files for the actual game itself. Simply hold start and press R to bring up the run dialog box. Inside of here, we'll be typing in percentage local app data percentage, then hit enter. A new folder will pop up. So users that are on Steam or other platforms, not including the Windows App Store, should stay here. But for those who are on the Windows App Store or the Xbox app, should head into the Packages folder. Typing in Packages, it selects it over here. Double click, and then we'll have to locate Private Division. The Outer Worlds. Double click on it, and we see this folder here. Open up Local Cache. Local. Because App Store games are stored in their own separate containers, it has its own local app data folder. On other platforms, these files we're about to open will instead appear in the normal local app data list where I asked you to stay right before we open packages. Then open Indiana, saved, config, followed by Windows No Editor. These are all of the game's config files. Simply open these files with Notepad by double clicking on them or right click, open with, followed by notepad. First of all, let's open up game user settings.ini. This contains all of the game's visual config, some we changed in game, 
some are only changed here. Anti-aliasing is something that can cost a lot of performance for minimal visual impact at higher resolutions. Simply lower anti-aliasing at the top to 2 or even 0 to help increase FPS. This of course will have a visual impact making edges and corners of objects more jagged. A lot of the settings below here are just quality of life settings such as adjusting the HUD or notifications. So I'll simply hit Control S to save and I'll close out of this file. Then a common setting that people like to disable is chromatic aberration. We did this in the game's options but we can do it through the config files as well just to make sure it's completely gone. Simply open up engine.ini and we'll see this here. Then leaving a line after the last options, we'll paste in this block from the description down below. Inside of all of these files, make sure you leave a new blank line at the very end by selecting the end of the previous line and hitting enter. These settings over here will simply make sure that chromatic aberration is completely turned off. You can include these or not, it's really up to you. I'll hit control S to save and we'll return to this file in a little bit. A common setting that people want to change is disabling mass acceleration completely. Open the input.ini file and we'll add the second block from the description down below. Again, leaving a line at the very end as such. I'll hit Control S to save and we can close out of it. When we open up the game, you may notice that we have to click to see the main menu. Some people don't like seeing the startup animation and we can simply stop it appearing with the third block from the description down below. We'll open up the game file, we'll leave a line between this and the last settings and we'll paste it in. Then of course, making sure there's an empty line at the very end. We'll hit Control S to save and we can close out of it. Then reopening the engine config file, we have a fourth block of commands in the description down below. These are less performance impacting, but can still make a big difference. I'll copy and paste these to the end of our previous options over here as such, and of course, leave an empty line at the end of the file. Of course, you can remove them one by one if you want to leave them as default or edit them as you see fit. R.DefaultFeature.AntiAliasing is the anti-aliasing type. 0 is none, 1 is FXAA, and 2 is default, temporal. Changing this won't make much of a performance difference unless you set this to 0 being off. Post-processing AA quality and max anastropy both improve the quality of anti-aliasing. You can ignore these if you set the option above to 0 or raise them if you want a higher quality anti-aliasing. Max anastropy barely affects performance, so having it in regardless of hardware should be good. This is applied after anti-aliasing and makes things look a little bit better with very little performance impact. Then the next few, temporal AA catmull ROM, temporal AA samples, and temporal AA current frame weight all add sharpness back after the image has been smoothed by anti-aliasing. Raising these will give sharper visuals. These won't have a huge performance impact, but you can of course lower them. The next option, screen percentage, can help prevent micro stutters and frame drops. I'll be leaving this at 100, but you can drop it a little bit lower. The next options affect color, and they don't have much of a performance impact at all. Tone mapper film, tone mapper dot sharpen, quality, and grain quantization. I'll be leaving these all as is. The motion blur settings just make sure that it's completely disabled. Having these here don't hurt on top of disabling it in-game already. You could skip these if you disabled it in-game and you feel like it. Depth of field quantity lets you see distant objects better. Having it set to zero gives you a clearer view without blurring the distance. This can cost a lot of performance on some computers, so disabling this completely by setting it to zero should help. The next two affect LOD, level of display. Adding these should decrease the distance that you can see clearer objects at. The default for static mesh LOD distance scale is 0.25. For users with better PCs, you may want to set this to 0.35 for a better than default quality. LOD distance scale is the distance that foliage will pop from 2D images to 3D objects or go from low to higher quality mesh objects. Raising this to 5 like we have should help minimize popping of objects, but you can drop this to something as low as 0.25 for maximum performance as this can cost quite a bit. The last option, higher quality light maps, enables better looking light maps. Having this on will dramatically increase the quality of light in game, but it costs a lot of performance. This is set to zero as it's an optimization guide. I recommend that you try the setting with one for a better visual experience, but of course that's up to you to decide. If you need absolute maximum performance, set this to zero. Then we'll hit Control S to save this file and we can close out of it. From here, the next time that you start up the game, things should be perfectly optimized and you should get incredibly good FPS as well as stability. But of course, that's all up to you to decide. Thank you for watching this video. My name's been Techno here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.